Welcome back to the channel. This is the third part of the 79J20 build. Uh, this video will be going over getting the dash storage system that I showed you in the previous video, uh, getting that all installed. I did also get a radio then, uh, so the radio will be getting installed along with uh, wiring it up. Um, the vintage air system was installed in the last video, so this video will be wiring it up. Uh, and then also then the dash will be going back in the instrument cluster um, all i have to do on as far as that goes is change the temperature gauge over on it as far as the radio goes i will also have to go through and do up the rear speakers which i mentioned uh, briefly in the last video uh, these will be going in the cab corners so there will be a bit of custom work that needs done as far as that goes uh, but everything else should be pretty straightforward uh, so without further ado let's get to it here's what I have uh, as a final finished product as far as the center uh, storage dash. I will be touching up these screws here um, since you had to put them in and then slide them over the the paint got messed up in a couple spots. Uh, so overall it turned out pretty nice. I do have a small gap right over here. I'm not sure if you can see it or not on the camera. Um, however, nothing I could do about that because all four bolts are tightened down. Now I'm able to put change in there, a phone, uh, whatever I need to essentially, whereas before it was just waste of space. Um, and like I said, the space on this dash is very limited or in this entire truck, I should even say. Uh, so with that in mind, I can now go ahead and get the radio all mounted up. There is a cover that goes here, so I'm not worrying about that right now. Um, and then I have simply my ashtray that just slides in. However, I'm not worrying about that right now either. And just putting the radio in, uh, and then once that's in, then I could go through and deal with the wiring for the radio, the vintage air, and then also get the dash all put back together. Uh, so let me go ahead and get the radio all in and then we'll go from there. Here's the first thing I want to show you as far as uh, the uh, putting the interior back together. This is a retro sound radio. This is a box that I came in. This is the part number here. It's an HCM2A1210373. Uh, so basically this is an M2A, uh, this was a Hermosa, if I recall, the radio, which explains the HC, the M2A is the model of the radio, and then the 121, the 03, and also the 73, um, those numbers change depending on how it, you option out the radio. This radio is supposed to be a direct fit for the 79J20, however we all know how that goes. I was going to go through and have the OEM radio redone uh, since I wanted to keep the originality in this truck. However, I was checking around into it. Um, pretty much anything as far as that goes was going to cost me a around $700 or so because I wanted something with Bluetooth built into it. Uh, so that just wasn't feasible. Um, I picked this up from Jegs. Uh, I'm sure you could get it other places. However, Jegs was the only one that had it in stock. Um, also, they were based out of Columbus, so it only took a day for a sh normal shipping to get to me. Uh, so this radio sent me back $300. So what you get in it, a sticker, of course, from Retrosound. This is a radio faceplate. This is the radio itself. And then it looks like this will be, it's like a trim collar for the radio and then the radio knobs. And these radio knobs actually feel like they might be metal instead of plastic, which is pretty nice. Um, let's continue diving into this. So like I said, uh, this is more of a universal fit radio. So you kind of have to build it together um, and put the pieces on it depending on how you optioned it out. Uh, let's see here. The install guide, user manual, installation assembly manual. Um, I'm sure I'll be, shouldn't be needing too many of that, too much of that actually. Um, this is a plate for the back of the radio. I still have my OEM one, so I'm going to try and use that one first since it's pretty much bent into shape um, and it should fit. Uh, let's see, miscellaneous hardware. 
the wiring for the radio. And then these are the brackets that go on the side for the knobs. Uh, looks like some other miscellaneous pieces here and there. And then my Bluetooth microphone. Here is the radio face that I picked out. If I could get it open. This is the closest one I could find uh, that pretty much resembled stock. Uh, so like I said, um, and they weren't an exact match as far as the knobs in the faceplate goes. However, this is the closest thing I could get to it. Um, looking at these knobs, this is pretty much how the knobs are going to look. Uh, it doesn't look too terrible. Um, kind of close to stock here. Let me grab stock. This is what I have as far as stock goes. Um, this retro sound radio, from what I have seen, is supposed to be able to retain the stock knobs. Uh, I don't believe I have a volume knob though. So I don't have a volume knob or a tuner knob. This kind of looks like it might be a volume knob. Um, so I won't be retaining the OEM uh, knobs. However, if you look at this bottom part of the knob, it does kind of look similar um, as far as you have a little nub here matching this little nub here. Um, but then as far as these knobs go that sit on the outside, I mean, they're completely different. So that's kind of fortunate, but it's all you could do, uh, especially when there's nothing made as far as uh, OEM replacements. So without further ado, let's get into getting this put together. Here is the retro sound radio. You can see uh, quite a bit different as far as looks. This one, the retro sound is a whole lot more blingy uh, and flashy, uh, whereas the original radio was pretty much bare minimum, just in there. So you at least have something. Uh, as far as size goes, you can see the size difference here. Um, the retro sound is quite a bit wider, if you could see that. Um, here, that's probably the easiest way to see the width difference. Uh, so it looks like the knobs will more than likely be moved all the way inside. Uh, and also then, as far as the faces go, you can see how much farther out the retro sound sticks compared to the OEM. So it looks like I probably will have to shift these as far forward as I can, which unfortunately is that far. So there's still quite a bit of a difference here. Uh, so go ahead and shove the OEM one back in the dash area because I'm not using that right now. Um, I will be getting this one test fit. Like I said, I have an ashtray right here, uh, which I will be getting rid of. However, that will be a future uh, concern along with this will be a future concern. More than likely, I will be putting some kind of switch dash probably in both of these. Uh, I don't smoke, so I have no use for an ashtray. Like I said, this piece over here was basically just a blank filler piece. What I am trying to do as far as everything in the truck goes, I'm basically starting from the bot from the top down uh, as far as getting everything reassembled. I have the center storage area, uh, so that will have to go in before the radio gets finalized. Uh, however, I'm just leaving it out right now. 
Um, so once the center storage is in and fully tightened down, then the radio could get fully tightened down. Once that's tightened down, then I will be going through and wiring up the vintage air system down here along with this radio. Um, and then once that's wired up and everything's situated, then I will go ahead and get my instrument panel in. Uh, other than that, um, there's nothing else to worry about as far as the dash goes. Um, I do have my glove box, of course, to put in. However, that's easy enough. You just slide it in. Uh, I did go from the OEM paper one because I actually did still have that in this truck uh, to a plastic glove box that I got from BJ's um, off-road. Um, so I already transferred over the four-wheel drive knob. Um, so pretty much all that's left after I get this mounted for the most part is just getting the vintage air situated along with this, uh, which shouldn't be too bad because I'm pretty, yeah, um, pretty knowledgeable as far as electrics go. Um, honestly, I hate body work more than I do electric work, um, if that means something. Uh, so let's, let me go ahead and get this all fitted because I will have to cut these tabs down uh, and then basically just see how everything looks. I do have that extra trim piece that looks like I will have to fit in uh, just due to the size difference here. Um, also, you could slide the radio in this way. You don't have to go through the back. If you go in this way, it pretty much gives you a rough idea anyways because uh, the holes are all spaced the same. So that looks pretty nice. As far as the alignment goes, I have an equal gap on both sides, uh, top and bottom. Um, it's pretty close as far as top and bottom goes. I'm not too sure how this faceplate will fit in here just due to the limited space that I actually have to work because uh, without the radio in here right now, um, that's pretty much what I'm ending up with. Uh, so I may have to go through and cut down this top lip all the way across uh, to try and get this shifted up, and then, which will then also mean I have to do this side. Um, and then once you do that side, you might as well just do these sides as well. Uh, so it all looks nice and uniform. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and cut these, get these knobs tightened, I should say, um, so they won't move too much. Go ahead and get a second like eyeball and then basically uh, just cut these off. I'll probably just use tin snips because there's not too much metal here. Um, I could use a grinder, however, uh, it's kind of unnecessary for how small of a sheet metal um, bracket these are. So let me go ahead and get everything lined up again and then uh, marked out and then I'll go ahead and get it all cut. Okay, here's a status update as far as getting the radio put in. Uh, this bezel here, I had to cut all three sides. Um, then on this very bottom side, I had to pretty much cut it all the way to that lip there that you see on the top. I went ahead and cut the bottom because so once it's in, um, you won't see it as easily. So that's it all finished um, in a sense finished. And then once the glove box door is in, uh, it does look okay for the most part. I mean, you can kind of see it's cut. However, if you put it on the top edge, it won't fit uh, because I have this slip here on the bottom, um, this rolled edge, I should say. Um, and then also with how this is cut, once it goes on the top, it's going to be very noticeable. So with that in mind, I'm simply going to keep it there. Here's what I have going on for the radio. Like I said earlier, I trimmed, had to trim the bottom of the bezel here down because uh, it was interfering with uh, this rolled lip on the dash. I uh, went ahead and also trimmed uh, both sides and also the top um, quite a bit off. And the plastic stuck out to probably about here all the way around. Uh, and then I also cut my knobs, um, the bracket for those down. It's a pretty nice fit now, so when you slide it in, if you look, there's no 
where no gaps anywhere. Um, the knobs I do, I did make them fit on the inside edge um, the, where the old knob sat, and that's simply because I have I'm putting the spacer on here, and then uh, the washer, and then the nut for the radio itself. Then. Once that's all tightened down, it's looking nice. The gap right there is a little tight, however, it looks pretty nice. Here's the radio all finished. Uh, I don't like the knobs, how big they look compared to the radio face. Uh, so I'll see if I could track down some smaller knobs for it. If not, it's just going to have to be what it is. Welcome back. Uh, this is the second day now as far as getting the radio and the wiring sorted out for the vintage air system. Uh, I went ahead and figured out what I'm doing as far as the speakers go. If I put the speakers here, which I had originally planned, um, it's a very tight fit. I could clearance out this seam right through here which isn't an issue however once I put the speaker grill in I don't like how it's going to be overhanging the seat belt um, obviously the seat belt could just sit on top of it like so however it's going to constantly be right up and up and down on the grill um, anytime someone's using the seat belt so I don't want the seat belt getting worn out I second thought then was putting it down here so it's out of the way then um, however, then I lose any of my floor space, uh, and also then it's just going to pretty much be a plywood, uh, not a plywood, but a pine box. So I don't like that option either. So this is what I came up with then as far as the only other option. I'm just going to put it in, uh, do a filler piece here. Just go out and put the speaker in like so. Um, this is how the Grand Cherokees have the speakers, so this is really the only other option. Then I'll just have my speaker grill then, which will sit on the outside of the door panel, something like that. I really don't like the look of it. I was never a fan of speaker grills sitting in door panels, however, it's pretty much the only other option I have as far as mounting speakers here. Then I am able to run the uh, the wiring for the speakers. I'm probably just going to tie it off of one of these lower hinges. Um, it should clear, it looks like, um, right through here. Uh, probably just sort of run the wire across and up and over with a couple zip ties. I want to kind of hit in so you don't see it too much. Uh, I could just simply use this hole here and knock out that plug and use that hole um, however I just don't want any wires dangling here uh, and I don't have any wire pass throughs so with that in mind you can then use that upper grommet right here then um, to feed the wire out and then it's going to simply run along the bottom of the dash this whole way um, all the way over to the radio then everything will be tied in should look pretty nice as far as hidden except for the speaker grills that will be in the door panel uh, which is unfortunate but it is what it is uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this all mounted up like the window is all the way down um, so it's not going to run into any issues with the window you can see it stops right there um, so it's pretty much just an empty void space so I might as well use it up with something uh, which pretty much means putting speakers here Here's what I have for the speaker that I did. I uh, just slightly trimmed out the top here uh, due to the bevel and the speaker um, right here. That way I could shift it up farther. Then I had this bar going across the bottom. So I just simply did a cut here and here. I bent this top edge up and then I also had to go through and bevel that as well. Um, this way I don't have to do an aluminum plate or anything. So looking at this now, I have that screw hole that will line up, both of these two screw holes, let me center this, both of these two screw holes line up and then the bottom lines up so I have five screws that will hold this in. So that will be more than enough. I went ahead and ran the speaker wire here, 
Um, you could slightly see it right here. Um, and then it runs up the channel and all the way back through that grommet that I pointed out earlier. It's nice then with that speaker wire there, it'll just freely spin, uh, open and close with the door. Um, so no one should notice this. Um, I did also notice though that these, let's see, that bolt, that bolt, that bolt, and also this bolt here are completely loose. I could even tie in that, un loosen that one completely by hand. So good thing I pulled the door panel off, I suppose, so I could go through and tighten down my door hinges so they don't fall off or vibrate out anymore, I should say. So going to go ahead and get this all screwed up, uh, move on to the other side, do the same exact thing, uh, throw a door speaker, the panels back on. I will have to cut the panels out for the speaker however that's not a big issue um, and once that is done then I'll go ahead and put the door panel on and then these speaker grills I will they put the for some reason the screws are on the back side and the screw holes uh, so since this has nothing to do with the speaker actually holding on I may just glue these to the door panel then because uh, I don't really have any other option Okay, I went ahead and got the speaker grills on both sides mounted up. I also ran the wire through the doors uh, pretty much right up to where the radio is. This is what the passenger speaker looks like. I do have a little bit of a gap right there on top. I taped them down so they wouldn't shift while the glue dried. However, I wasn't around it and I guess that it kind of shifted. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. However, then the passenger side turned out, or the driver's side, sorry, turned out pretty good. I went ahead and here's my speaker wire. I'm just running it um, loosely for now. I am putting some zip ties on the harness, but if you look, I'm not completely cinching the zip ties down. That way I am able to run more wires through it when I need to. Coming up here off of the factory um, fan switch, which is right there in case you're wondering. This red wire is hot whenever I turn the key on. So that will be my 12 volt ignition source for my purple wire. These other three wires then are, were going to the blower motor before. This tan wire right here on the backside when I feed that power, the fan is running full speed. And then I have this brown with a white tracer, and then this dark brown, which is doing nothing right now because um, the fan is unhooked up. Here's what I have going on under the hood. Part in the jumper cables, I was just simply using it as a ground jumper wire. Um, so I know that the housing was getting ground. Here are the three wires that I had said. There's this tan wire, this brown wire, and then a brown and white wire. This tan wire is jumped into this thicker tan wire, which is going to the blower motor. Right here. And then the blower motor is simply getting us ground then via the housing. So I'm going to cut these wires. Um, pull them all the way through the loom since I'm not a fan of leaving miscellaneous wires that are no longer needed in looms. So I'm going to get rid of the, this entire harness, if you want to call it a harness. And then I'm going to be getting rid of this orange, or tan wire, sorry, that's going to blower motor, since the blower motor will be inside then. And it looks a whole lot cleaner now. This brown wire here, I don't have to worry about because like the heater, um, the fan is going to be gone, so I don't need to worry about that. Here, might as well undo my ground there since I don't need it anymore. Um, and pull that out. So now, the only loom that I have on this side is this one right here, which, if I remember right, is going to the plow. Yes, is going to the plow. 
Um, so that is staying, and then I have obviously the factory loom here. And then back in here, I went ahead and mounted up my relays along with my vacuum solenoids for the vintage air. So I'm, right now I'm pretty much just plugging in everything um, and getting it all wired up. Uh, I have a, uh, a little hole here, a grommet that I plugged. I think it's somewhere around here, so I can run it. I will probably run that through there, um, along with my vacuum hoses. Went ahead and found out where this hole was. Um, so I just, what I did was I went to the engine bay. Uh, I was able to see the grommet because I had um, a solid grommet in there. I went ahead and took a pair of needle nose pliers or you could use a pointy screwdriver or an awl or anything. Anyways, basically just poked it from that outside in here uh, so I could see where the hole was. Then I cut away with a razor knife. I have to trim a little bit more here uh, to make this opening. Once that was done, then I peeled away this backing, the thermal barrier, and then I put in a grommet. Um, that way I have, I'm able to pass wires through and then it also will fill up and then become air sealed. What, something that is pretty nice is making sure you have a grommet set like this. Uh, this is a performance tool one. I probably got it from some racing when I was stopping by. Anyways, they, it pretty much has any grommet you'll ever need in it. Um, I, I use this almost constantly, uh, whether it be filling holes that are already there, and you don't want any air coming through, or basically, or there's a cut area. Um, you drill a hole and you want to pass wires through without the wires getting chafed on whatever metal. Uh, you're running it through. This is a really nice set to get. If you don't already have one, I really recommend it. Uh, so that's that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that trimmed away a little bit more then. The insulation and then once that's done, I'll pass just roughly pass the wires that I need uh, through there. I'm not going to worry about hooking them up or anything. Just that way I keep it, start getting everything nice and organized because there's a lot going on. So I went ahead and got that red wire that had that 30 amp fuse on it. I pushed it through that grommet there, uh, which if you look at the instructions here, that red one needs to go to the battery. Um, this purple one right here is going to tie into the ignition um, along with the uh, the red wire for the radio. These vacuum hoses here are for the four wheel drive so I'm just essentially tucking them out of the way so they're not getting tangled up because I like keeping everything sorted as I can.
I went ahead and finished with all the wiring. Uh, here is the end result of it. Uh, let me get a light going in here. Uh, this yellow wire for the radio, I simply tie, will be tying into this ring terminal here. Uh, this ring terminal is going directly to the alternator, so this will be getting a 12 volt hot wire hot all the time. Um, I'm waiting to hook this up until I finish the dash, changing the temperature gauge on that, and then get the dash in. Since this is hot all the time, I don't wanna short it out, which is why it's taped up, even though the battery's undone. Here's all the grounds for the vintage air system and then here is the ground for the radio uh, I did tie that all off of the dash um, this red wire here I tied off of is the 12 volt switch for the radio I tied that off of the original radio uh, wire which only got 12 volts when the key was all the way forward uh, this purple wire then is the 12 volt activation for the vintage air system and I once again tied that directly off of the original heater wire that was only 12 volts when the key was all the way forward. I went ahead and plugged in the vacuum um, for the vintage air, one of the vacuum solenoids to my little vacuum canister that I have here. Um, it, I had this port plugged, so it was a good spot for it. It's possible the original one vacuum went there anyways. I couldn't say for sure since the vacuum gauges weren't, or vacuum controls were unhooked when I got this. So I went ahead and did that. This vacuum line down here, I left unhooked. It is simply going to be going to the vacuum, um, the heater control valve. Uh, however, I haven't put in my firewall bungs, I guess if you want to call them here yet, for my heater. I will be doing that tomorrow since it's pretty late. This is the red wire for the vintage air system. Um, pretty much followed it through and needed to go directly to the battery. So I just mounted it here temporarily. Uh, I used that screw there. Um, this was the original heater hose clamps. Um, clamp. Uh, this wire harness is not factory. This is for my plow that is on this truck so I basically just shoved it inside the clamp kind of to hold everything. Um, as of now I'm keeping the plow on this truck. I may just completely remove everything in the future uh, when I do get into more serious off-roading at least with this vehicle. Uh, and then I simply ran it directly to the battery on the starter solenoid. So this is the dash. Like I said, I already did the ammeter bypass on this. Uh, here is the voltage that I put in. If I remember right, it was a, uh, a Bosch gauge that I put in. Um, it's an 8 to 18 volt. I did also, it used to say amps. I simply used some nail polish, uh, covered up the amps, and then I had my fiance print out the volt. Uh, she cricketed that out so it looks as close as possible to the oil uh, font. When this truck is fully hot, it's only reading at that line right there, um, the top of the cord, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, which I have already went through and replaced the temp sending unit in the truck and it's still reading that way. So there's either a bad gauge or the wiring is messed up somewhere and causing a faulty ohm reading. Temp gauge on these have a volt step down and basically powers all the gauges. Uh, so what I did was, I know this is my hot here, I use, am using this to power the main gauge cluster, then that's going over to this uh, voltage reducer, uh, which if I remember right, it's a 12 down to a five volt, if I remember. Um, and then you have the power out then, that is going to the temp gauge. Um, and then you have then your main ground right here. And it's that easy to take off the temp gauge. This is an original Stuart Warner gauge, uh, so that's why I'm hoping this is bad. 
Okay, before I put everything back together here, um, I already cinched the zip ties behind the instrument cluster. A couple things I want to mention. Um, this is the heater duct that came with the vintage air kit. Uh, if you look at the duct back in here, um, you'll see this hose is too small to go over top of the duct like it was from the factory. However, it's a perfect fit inside. Um, so basically, I want to be able to attach the vintage air system um, down at the bottom without any issues. So I'm going to just essentially put this up in the defroster duct and then go through and foil tape, like HVAC foil tape it, uh, just so I know it's held into place. I mean, it's not really coming out in the first place. Um, I just don't want really any excessive air leaks. Second thing to mention then, this is a microphone that came with a retro sound kit. Um, honestly, this thing is massive. Um, the clip, I don't know why they have a clip this thick unless it's to go on visors. Um, but essentially, there's no way I want to run this in this truck. And this is a microphone I have lying around from a JVC radio. Um, you can see the clip difference here. Uh, so I could put this in a lot more places and it should hopefully grab. Another thing worth noting, uh, you can see the size difference and just the two microphones in general um, and even the width. Basically this one from JVC seems a whole lot nicer. It even feels a whole lot heavier um, compared to this cheap one from the Retro Sound Kit. So that's a little disappointing as far as that goes. Um, also the Retro Sound Kit, uh, there's no double side tape anywhere on this. So essentially you're stuck trying to figure out how to mount it up on your own. Whereas the one from JVC does come with double sided tape. I also did put the USB port from the uh, from the radio. Um, since I have this gap here, um, I wanted the USB port sticking out. That way I could easily plug something in um, and then it kind of tucks in there nice. It does take up a little bit of space. However, what you gain from it is a whole lot better than not having it at all. This is the final day as far as getting the dash put back together. Um, there's really nothing else major to do after today. I am waiting on the cigarette lighter right here. Um, that will be showing up tomorrow, however that's easy enough to install. Um, so I'm not going to show any of that. Once that is in place, then the glove box could be slid in and screwed up. So once again, that's easy enough to do. Um, I'm. As I stated, uh, the, this left upper left area, the ashtray, I'm simply going to put the old one back in. And then on the right side here, I'm leaving that open. Uh, since I am making this into like an overland kind of build, um, and also just a daily use full truck for me, I'm probably going to put a ham radio if it, I am able to find one that fits in that spot. Uh, if not, then it's going to simply become a switch spot. And then the left side I could always use for my ham radio spot. The only thing that I have left then major would be my pass throughs for my heater and my AC. As far as that goes, I am leaving the AC ones alone for now because um, I'm not worried about AC throughout the winter. I more than likely will pass them through this opening, this little access panel, I guess, if you want to call it, that was here from the factory. Um, for the, my heater, hose is low. I'm going to put them roughly right around here. Um, so they will be passing through like this. It gives me pretty much a straight shot then to come over to these to the main heater box then itself. So for the engine bay then, uh, right here is that access panel that I was talking about. So like I said, I'll probably pass my AC lines through there. I'm trying to keep everything far down um, and out of the way. Uh, I want to be able to either put an ARB a compressor in here for airing up tires, um, either that or a second battery back in here. What I'm doing for then the heater lines, um, the, I'm putting one right roughly around here um, at a 90 degree and another one roughly right around there at a 90 degree um, passing through. So then that way, when the lines come out of here, one simply has to come up over here. 
And then the other one then would pass through and go right there on the water pump. Right there on the water pump. So, so I'll go ahead and get these drilled out. Um, drilled out and mounted up and then um, start running the lines. Okay, I got these tightened down uh, so they're not going anywhere. When you put these fittings on, make sure you have the O-ring here um, and it didn't fall off, so it'll go something like that. Uh, I do have a small bit of mineral oil. Once that's on, you could these could be tightened down, then I can start running my rubber um, line inside and outside. So something that helps uh, when you go to slide these on the barbed fittings um, to spray it with a little WD on the inside. Uh, you could also spray the barred fitting itself, um, and that just helps get a nice fit um, on the barb, and it helps it slide on a whole lot easier. So the bottom's on. Looks like it needs to go roughly uh, it's about here. Then with a the cut, repeating the same thing all over again. Spray it with a little bit of oil. Uh, don't forget your hose clamps. Uh, probably that way. And then working it onto that fitting. I have this clamp going this way, so I could tighten it down from this side. If I had that clamp going the same way on this side, it would be a little tight. Uh, so I just oriented it, so I'll tighten it down from the side. Um, and then repeat the same again for then the top. This one ended up a little short, um, and it's pretty much right at this barb. Uh, so I'll probably just go ahead and pull that off because I could use it in the engine bay uh, and redo that line. Now that those lines are done, uh, I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Everything's nice and tight as far as those lines go. Um, with an AC system also, you do have your drain line, um, which you don't want to forget about. Okay, here's what I have going on as far as the hose connection under the engine area. Um, it shows the very bottom line here is supposed to go to the intake manifold, and then the top line is supposed to go to the water pump. On my lines coming out of the heater box, I literally have top to top on the box and bottom to bottom on the box. As far as that goes, that way this matches up with top top and bottom bottom. So if there's any issues in the future, it's easier to diagnose uh, which what's actually wrong. Um, so um, same thing as the inside. Uh, spray a little bit of WD on the hose, slide the hose onto the barbed fitting, um, and then slide it over and basically hook everything up. This is a small section of hose from the top clamp that was a little too short uh, to reach fully. So I'm going to use this on the fitting coming from the intake manifold. So then that way I have my heater control valve like this. Um, and it's basically just minimizing my hose waste as far as everything goes uh, with this install. So this is supposed to be a three quarter inch hose because uh, I just checked my old hose. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse my old hose. Um, I really don't recommend it, especially if you're going through and making everything new, you might as well just use new. However, um, 
I mean, this hose looks like it's new enough for me to use. Uh, I did cut the other end of it to get it off. However, I'm simply going to, uh, it's long anyway, so I'm simply going to get a snip off what I cut. So that's not going to be an issue. Then, this should fit a lot better now. Said it's going to be a tight fit because of how they have this laid out. So basically, I'm in here trying to wiggle it up and down to get it on a little bit more. Okay, there we go. It's on pretty much as far as it'll go. Um, so going to go ahead and tighten this one down. Now that that's tightened down, I just need to route it back over um, to my 90 degrees over here. So I'm going to go ahead, go back to trying to put water in this. I'm just doing water now, no sense in wasting any antifreeze on it if it does end up leaking. Uh, also water is easier to clean up if it does leak inside the cabin uh, rather than antifreeze because of how oily antifreeze is. So right now I'm just putting in water, um, testing for leaks or checking for leaks. If nothing leaks then I could go ahead and uh, run this for a couple of days. So let's go ahead and fill the radiator up with water and check for leaks. I did forget to mention, uh, I do have this funnel here uh, for filling, for using um, and filling up radiators uh, to get the air out. It's honestly like a lifesaver. Uh, it's a whole lot easier to use. They're both filling up and also trying to get the air out. So basically you put on your adapter, then you put on your radiator fitting. Um, you can see there's different radiator fittings and different adapters depending on the application. Uh, then you just put it and press with it down and then and now I have some, a big nice jug uh, to fill up with water or antifreeze if you're, I was doing antifreeze right, right away. Uh, air bubbles will work their way up. Uh, if I have any water or antifreeze left over, after I work all the air bubbles out, I'm able to plug it. Um, antifreeze, you could transfer back to the container assuming that this funnel is clean or water, you could just simply dump down the drain then. using regular tap water there are a lot of people who um, try, recommend distilled water for what I'm doing right here I, uh, regular tap water is perfectly fine since I'm not going to be uh, running this long um, and also it'll help flush out any contaminants then when I do drain the radiator um, no sense in wasting money on distilled water Looks like there's no more major air bubbles trying to work their way out, um, so that's good. Uh, I'm basically just going through with the light, checking all my fittings, make sure none of them are leaking. Wish there was some water on this bottom one, however, is from when that top one leaked. So far, everything's looking good. Check inside the cabin here. No 
don't think leaking in here either. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start this up, make sure everything's clear of the fan, um, and then that way I could run it for a bit and see, um, work any air out of the system and also see if anything ends up leaking. Uh, my brake controller is working, the radio is working. Um, my, the vintage air system, if you can hear it, is working. Uh, that's on high uh, and it is blowing out pretty good. Uh, go ahead and turn this on to heat. I don't feel any.
show up, so that's not a big issue. Um, I do need to put new door seals on here. These ones are pretty trashed. And that's the top of them. Uh, they are pretty trashed, so I do have to be doing that. However, uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. That's something I could easily do down uh, here in a couple weeks. Uh, basically, I'm just trying to get this up and running. Uh, so I do have at least some kind of vehicle because I've been down now without a truck for a couple months. And it does feel like I am getting some heat out of the vintage air system now. Uh, so I'll just continue, monitor this, and then I'll report back to you guys.